we just give God the glory, the honor, and all the praise. You're more than welcome to join us in the ministry. You can join us in the uh, high rise here. We just thank God. For those of you that are here tonight, it looks like you've been out here both nights this week, and we're just grateful for your presence tonight. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Uh, audio, visual, can you take the volume down just a notch? Just, just a notch. We thank you for it. Thank God for the choir that's here tonight. Thank God for his presence. We've had a wonderful service. Now, you got to pay attention tonight. Amen. You pay attention, and right here in the floor, there's a pool. And every now and then, that pool will get troubled. And if you can look out and see the troubling of the water, that would be your opportune time to run out, stand in the pool, lay in the pool, do whatever you want to do, but get in the pool. And ask God for whatever you have a desire for. He said, make your request be made known unto the Lord with thanksgiving. The season is here. Let us not take the burdens that we brought here tonight. Don't take it back home. He said, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. He said, uh, you know, take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We thank God on tonight as our praise and worship team gets themselves prepared to lead us in devotion this evening. We'd ask you to join in with us because we came to celebrate tonight, amen? amen. I don't know about you, we came to celebrate. Because somebody, I was trusting God. I said, well, Lord, heal somebody tonight. Uh, save somebody tonight. Deliver somebody tonight. Set somebody free on tonight. But you gotta want it. If you want it, you know, it's here for you to have. So we thank God on tonight. We thank God. For a mighty move of God. We got a preacher in the house tonight. We've got the saints of God in here. The Bible says if uh, one can chase a thousand and two can put ten thousand to flight. Amen. So we're going to run the devil right back to hell from whence he came. Am I all right with that? Am I talking right tonight? I, do I have somebody to help me send Satan back to hell tonight? Amen. That means we're going to have to get rowdy tonight. Amen. We're going to get radical tonight. We just thank God because his presence is already here. He said, I promise to meet you. And this is where I promise to meet you, where I promise to hear and answer your prayers. Thank God on tonight. Give it over to our worship team on tonight. Anybody want to join the worship team? Brother Glenn, why don't you come on and help these brothers with the worship? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory. Um, yeah, there you go. Thank you, brothers. We got two Brother Glenns. <laughs> you both of y'all. You're already here. You, you know, so thank you, Lord. Amen. We got some more microphones around. We're certainly glad that you are part of our 70th birthday. I mean, my anniversary. Um, the old patriarch used to sing the old song. They were working, come to church, not really, not dressed up, but they came to church yeah. and sang the song, Hard Day's Work. But we're going to start off with, So glad I'm here. Lord, I'm so glad I'm here. Lord, I'm so glad I'm here. Oh. 
Put your child on while I'm here. I will moan while I'm here. I will moan while I'm here in Jesus' name. Put your child sing while I'm here. I will sing while I'm here. I will. Another song. Yeah, I got it. Invite everybody to sing. Praise the Lord, everybody. everybody yeah, can yeah, sing. yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, Praise the Lord. to say nothing this evening. But if God ever done anything for you, 
We got this opportunity right now yeah. to praise him, yeah. to tell him thank you. Thank you. It's another day. Yeah. Didn't God wake you up this morning? Yeah. That's enough right there to give him glory. Didn't he start you on your way? Yeah. That's enough right there to give him praise. Yeah. Ain't God all right, y'all? Yeah. Ain't he all right? Yeah. Ain't God all right? Yeah. So we're going to take this opportunity we got to give God our all this evening. Yeah. Because I remember the time I found the Lord one day. I find the Lord one day. I find the Lord when I kneel down and pray. I found the Lord one day. I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I found the Lord. He picked me up. I found the Lord. He turned me around. I found the Lord. He placed my feet. I found the Lord. On solid ground. I found the Lord. I, I find the Lord one day. I find the Lord one day. I find the Lord when I kneel down and pray. I find the Lord one day. I found the Lord. I find the Lord. I found the Lord. I find the Lord. I could not keep it. When I found the Lord, I found the Lord. I told my mother that I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I told my father that I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I told my sister. I found the Lord. I told my brother that I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I found the Lord one day. I find the Lord one day. I find the Lord when I kneel down and pray. I found the Lord one day. I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I was praying. I was singing. Oh, I was praying. When I found the Lord, I told everybody that I found the Lord. I could not keep it. I could not keep it. I told everybody that I found the Lord. Oh, I was praying. I was singing. I was seeking when I found the Lord. Yeah, I find the Lord one day. I find the Lord one day. I find the Lord when I kneel down and pray. I find the Lord one day. I found the Lord. 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 I told my pastor that I found the Lord. I told my deacon that I found the Lord. I could not keep it that I found the Lord. Church, I was praying. Oh, I was praying. Yes, I was praying. When I found the Lord, I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I found the Lord. And I found the Lord. I found the Lord. I find the Lord one day. I find the Lord one day. I found the Lord when I kneel down and pray. I found the Lord one day. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm going to sing this one and make it very brief. Amen. Because uh, I was Amen. so glad with God did for me. Amen. You know? And, and when he did it, you know, I at first said I wasn't going to tell nobody. Yeah, nobody. Uh -huh. but, but I, I just couldn't keep it to myself. Amen. So that's what the song was all about. Yeah. 
You know I said I wasn't gonna wait, wait. tell it. Uh, oh, when I, I found Jesus, you know that I said I wasn't, wasn't gonna, gonna tell, tell it. Oh, lordy, 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 when I. Still has its place. Yeah. Seventy years is still uh, a long time, 
you know, uh, we got members that have been here for the majority of that time, and we just want to celebrate them as yes. they celebrate the church's yes. anniversary. I always talk about it and how we, uh, you know, I know we have pastor's anniversaries. I, I've never been a big fan of them, uh, and not to negate or not make anybody feel many kind of a way, but I think the church's presence is more important than the yeah. pastors. Pastors come, yeah. pastors go. We are migrant workers. We'll come, we'll leave. Thank you for any appreciation uh, that you give, but at the end of the day, when it's time to celebrate the church's presence and yes. its position, we ought to do just that and yeah. really go all out and say, I am so grateful that the Lord, because Many of many of our churches are closing every day, right. every day, and the saints yeah. of God are worrying about this thing and worrying about that thing and complaining about this thing and that thing. But the Bible says, if you are a child of God, if you are part of my people, which are called by my name, Amen. if we begin to humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, seek his face, pray, then will I hear from heaven, I will heal your sins, and I will forgive, uh, forgive your sins and heal the land. And we, we cannot keep complaining about what has happened. What's wrong with the world? Well, the Bible says we are what's wrong with the world. If you're a born-again believer, then you have a great part to play, amen? You see, if that's what joy is going to bring, if that's what salvation is going to bring, if that's what I found the Lord is going to bring, shout and jump and, and give God some glory and honor and praise. You can't tell me you found the Lord and always just clamoring and just like, oh, God, oh, well, it don't take all of that. I don't know how much it takes. But I thank God for whatever little I got. I want to give it all that I got, so I just thank God. So we'll continue to move on again. Welcome to the New Old Baptist family. We are celebrating the 70th year. I am so grateful, and I always talk about these last two days because I'm celebrating right along. I had a birthday two days ago now. Yes, I brought it up again. Uh, we just thank the Lord. I'm not as old as the church, but nevertheless, I'm almost, he said, I'm almost there. Well, 69, that's, that's close enough. But so we are grateful that what God has done. I know there are many of you sitting here that's much older than I am, but I thank God for the years that I've been given, and I am grateful to God. So we're going to move right along because we've had three wonderful nights, well, two wonderful nights, so we're already speaking it in existence because we expect the Lord to show up tonight. Amen? Amen. So we just thank God tonight again and just giving him continual glory and honor and praise. Um, we're going to turn it over to our master of ceremony, our mistress of ceremony this evening. Looks like our very own. Uh, we call her Sister Cookie, but she'll be coming to uh, Deacon S. Days. She's going to come now, and then she'll take us in the rest of these service. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Let us sing together with uplifted voices unto the glory of God. Thank you so much. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father which art in heaven, holy is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from all things like sin and evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and forever. Let thy will be done. Have your way in this place tonight, Heavenly Father. Somebody came tonight for deliverance. Somebody came for healing tonight. But somebody came looking to know that their names are now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray that a word will go forth tonight, Heavenly Father that will convict and a word that will convince and call out and that one may cry out, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Have your way in this place tonight. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. Amen and amen. amen. To God be the glory. Why don't the choir come on and sing your way on up? I know the choir's in here tonight. So we're going to ask the choir to come on up and sing your way up to the pulpit tonight, or to the choir loft tonight. Amen. Thank you. I don't hear no voices. I know we got some silent singers up in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, Lord. You forgot you were on the choir? Oh, 
Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I know Dr. McQueen can sing a little bit. Why don't you sing something on the way up? Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Mighty kind of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been doing church 70 years. Has the Lord done anything for you? Come on and sing, you are. I think y'all know that song. Let me say that again. Has the Lord done anything for you? Come on and sing, you are to run and tell that. That's a little better. Has the Lord done anything for you? Choir, help me sing, you all tell that. Listen, I'm a living witness. My God, you see you through. Oh, you, you ought to run and tell that. Listen, he picked me up, then he turned me around. Placed my feet on solid ground. And you ought to, you ought to tell that. I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. And you tell, oh, 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 you. Oh, come on, help me You ought to run. Oh, you. You ought to run. And tell well you ought to run and tell that you ought to run and tell that you ought to run you ought to tell that you ought to run you ought to tell that oh you You ought to run, you ought to run and tell that. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Uh, thank you, sir. We've had two wonderful nights. There's no hindering spirits that's going to walk up in here tonight and try to take control of this house. Somebody gave me a word today that told me about they had a dream because uh, we were talking about how there is no spirit that will come in here and rule this house. The only spirit that rules this house is the spirit of the living God. Amen. He comes in here, he throws his weight around. You know, we just thank God because when we come up in here, we expect something to happen. I've heard this choir on more than one occasion. Uh, occasion. I've heard them say, I know what they can do. They ain't as good as Lou, but, but we... But we know what they can do. We know that there is a spirit that rested upon this choir. And so there's no hindering spirit, not tonight. Maybe another night or maybe somewhere else. But tonight, you came in the house just like you were down at St. John. You're going to give it your all. You're going to give it everything you got. And I know mom don't play that. Because mom knows how this thing goes. But she gets ready to let us know how the spirit of God rules in the choir law. Because the enemy wants to get up in here and discourage and distract. Amen? Amen. And we just thank God. This is still the house of God. Am I? talking right. And all right then, so we ain't gonna have that, not tonight. Right. The third night, we, we've had a wonderful week. We've had a wonderful week trying to get up in the microphones and everything like that. Not tonight in the, in the music. Not not tonight. Amen. Maybe another night. But don't let it be tonight. Amen. We just thank God. We want to have some real church up in here. Somebody need a healing tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Thank the Lord, brethren. I've heard this meal choir, especially brothers. Come on, help us out now. Hallelujah now. Thank you, daughter. Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing? Wonderful. It's so good to be in the house of God. Amen. We could have been someplace. We could have been in a hospital. Yes. Crying the loss of a family member. Yes. But he blessed us and gave us grace. Yes. So we just ought to be grateful just to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes. Give an honor to God, yes. to our pastor. Celebrating 69 years. <laughs> His beautiful wife, First Lady Karen. Um, 70 years. That's a long time. So when I, 
I look at numbers and I think about how important a number is. So when I saw 70, I said, you know, biblically, biblically what does 70 replicate? Right. If you look in the Bible, you're going to see 70 yes. several times. Right. Yes. So I got a couple meanings of the number 70 right. I want to share with you before we get started. Yes. Jeremiah 29.10, for thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you the promise and bring you back to this place. Yes. Psalms 90.10, the year of our life are 70, yes. or even by reason of strength, 80, yes. that their span is but total trouble. They are yes. soon gone and will fly away. Numbers 11 and 16. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said to Moses, mm -hmm. Gather for me 70 men or elders of Israel, yes. who to be known to be elders of people yes. and officers over them, yes. and bring them out to the tent of meeting and let them take their stand there with you. Yes. Genesis 46 and 27. Uh -huh. And the sons of Joseph, who were born him and all the persons in the house of Jacob who came into Egypt, 70. All right. Got a couple more. I know my mom looked at me. <laughs> but 70 is an important number. Uh, let's see. Daniel 9 and 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived the books of numbers of years that according to the word of the Lord of Jeremiah the prophet must pass before the end, the desolation of Jerusalem, namely seven years. Amen. 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 So we know how important 70 is, yes. and that 70 is a blessing. Yes. Yes. So with that, and our 70th anniversary, we're going to have our welcome address, and that's going to be by Sister Willette Hayward, and then we'll have the response by DJ Matthew. Let's get right here. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. 
going to have an opening hymn, yeah. a blessing hymn, yeah. and then we're going to have a scripture reading followed by the prayer and the We're going to get right. All right. Come up, I am.
amazing grace. It was grace that brought me this far. And God grace will lead me on. Thank you, Lord. Today, we celebrate Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And he told us to rejoice, rejoice. and to be glad in it. Yes. You know, somebody right now is crying. Yes. Heart is broken. Yes. This loved one is sick. Yes. But God told us to rejoice. Yes. And we, we want the strong to be the infirmity of the weak. Because yes. we get weak sometimes. Yes. I don't care if you're the pastor or the bishop, we get weak Amen. on this journey. But we got to believe that what Jesus said in 2 Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verse 14. Amen. If my people, Amen. which are called by my name, Amen. shall humble themselves, yes. pray, yes. seek my face, yes. and turn, yes. turn away from their foolishness, yes. from their wicked ways. Yes. We believe God can heal the land. Yes. No matter how bad it looks right now, yes. it looks terrible. Yes. Our God is able. Yes. We got to believe that now. Then we got to live according. Yeah. I'm here to read the scripture. I didn't mean to say all that, but the Holy Spirit wants you to know yeah. that he is able yeah. to deliver you. Yeah. Deliver me. He's done it before. Yeah. And I know he can do it again. Do it again. Amen. Yeah. We are just laborers. Yeah. Laboring for the master. Thank you, we ain't working for the preacher. Thank you, sir. We ain't working for the deacon. And right. we're working for the master yeah. who got the ultimate payment end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't about one penny now, yeah. but that penny, can, that penny can buy you eternity yeah. in heaven. Yeah. That's work for that penny, y'all. Yeah. The scripture for the day is in Matthew, the ninth chapter. Can I ask if you would? Verse 35 to 38. If you need a job, <laughs> God got it. All right. <laughs> you ain't working if you don't need a job. Be hired anyway. Yeah. Matthew, ninth chapter, beginning of the 35th verse. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogue, yeah. and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, Hallelujah. and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, mm -hmm. because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep scattered, sheep having no shepherd. Uh -huh. Then says he unto his disciples, are you disciples this evening? Hallelujah. Work for the Lord. Amen. The harvest truly is plenteous, uh -huh. but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore Pray. the Lord of harvest that he will send forth laborers into the vineyard. Amen. He's able, y'all. Yes, He's able. Yes. Let's praise him this evening.
say this prayer again one more time. For that, I thank you, Heavenly Father. For my family, a Heavenly Father, looking out for me, a Heavenly Father. When I can't look out for myself, Heavenly Father, I say thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything that they've done, Heavenly Father, for everything that they're doing, Heavenly Father. I say thank you, Heavenly Father, for my wife, Heavenly Father, has been through the concern to me, Heavenly Father. For that, I say thank you, Heavenly Father, for my daughter, Heavenly Father, that no day that comes by that she doesn't say thank you, Heavenly Father. I thank you for that, Heavenly Father, for this pastor, Heavenly Father, for these deacons, Heavenly Father, for my Brother, Heavenly Father, in God, in Christ, Heavenly Father, I say thank you, Heavenly Father. I don't know how long I'm going to be here, Heavenly Father, but I know that as long as I'm here, I'm going to give you the glory, Heavenly Father. I'm going to give you the honor, Heavenly Father. I'm going to give you the glory, Heavenly Father, because I know that it's you, Heavenly Father. Hold me in. 
in your arm. With your ball, your ball, your ball, boy. And I need you, I need you, oh Lord. With your ball, boy.
bring crews come in. Can, can you just give me a minute here? We need to understand what worship looks like. Worship doesn't need me clinching the person who's giving glory and honor and praise. Allow them to worship in their place right where they are. I know we mean well. I know we'll fan and we'll hold hands. And, but let them release and let glory flow freely. This is what God is doing. This is what worship looks like in your own way. There has to be a reason why we do what we do. They that worship him and worshiping in spirit and in truth. That's a season then, a time. And so we just trust God. Come on, brother. But I, I just need us to recognize. We don't always have to hold them down and hold people's hand and fan them. And I know we mean well. God knows we do mean well. But sometimes just let that person glorify God right where they are. Amen. Just let God have his way. If you've ever been in that atmosphere, you know, you recognize how worship looks. What worship looks like. Amen. Come on, we're still in services, please. And we're just thanking God. You can talk to each other when you get out of services. But right now, let us, let us just maintain. Let us get to the place where we can recognize what worship is looking like. Amen. We just want God because we're trusting God. For you have to know the story behind Deacon Dee's story. You must know what has transpired. You must know. Uh, she said she's been in this ministry for over 30-something years. Amen. And we have seen the handiwork of God move in this place. And this is what we expect. We expect God to show up. We expect him to show up. We expect him to come into this place. Amen. And we just thank God. And stop being so disobedient and disrespectful. Amen. We need order in the house of God. The cleansing of the house must happen before the power and the presence of God shows up. Amen. Whether we recognize it or not, we, we have time out for those other things we used to do. Amen. And the preacher comes in here and the preacher has to sit there for an hour, sometimes an hour and 15, 20 minutes before he gets up to preach because we do all these other preliminaries. The preacher sits there ready to preach and when he's ready to preach, he's ready to preach. You know, so them things that we used to do, we're going to flip the script a little bit sometimes. I mean, right now, we're going to continue in the services, but we're going to put the preacher up first. Let him do what he got to do, and then all the other stuff we can do, because we need a word from God. Amen? Amen. We need a word from God. That word has a way of healing and deliverance and setting the captives free. Uh, the ushers are going to uh, help us out with this offering, please. Thank you. Would you please stand? Would you please? Thank you so much. Jesus came when I'm burdened. Yes, he came when I'm all alone. Yes, he came about my situation. He's good to know. He's always there. And my day seem dark as night. He'll be there to make it all right. Yes, I know, I know that Jesus cares. He cares for, I know he cares for me. Jesus cares when I'm burdened. When my Lord is so hard to bear. Yes, he cares. About my situation, he's good to know, he's always there, and my day seem dark as night, he'll be there to make it all right, yes I know, I know that Jesus cares, he cares for, I know he cares Lord, yes, I know that he cares for me. Yes, he does. Lord, I know that he cares for me. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'm down. Sometimes I'm down. I 
Jesus King When I'm burdened It's so hard to bear Yes, he cares about my situation It's good to know He's always there And my days seem dark as night He'll be there to make it all right Yes, I know, I know that Jesus cares Be careful, I know he cares Lord, yes I know oh, That he cares, he cares For me Yes he does I know That he cares For me Oh yeah Lord, sometimes I'm up Sometimes I'm down We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We bless the name of the Lord. As we continue to give him glory and honor and praise, we only take up the one offering, so we thank you for giving your best offering tonight. And we just thank God for it. We'll bless the offering later on, but uh, we'll also um, make an announcement of what we... Um, uh, collected on tonight and for the other two nights as well but you're gonna have to come back Sunday to find out how much it was so but we are so grateful again tonight thank you choir thank you musicians thank you everyone tonight uh, sister Wanda Dees you've been put on the spot tonight you have been put on the spot uh, tonight because you were asked to come and introduce this preacher on tonight uh, so yeah how about that I asked him and he was the one who volunteered you so we thank God, so you know. But one thing about the preacher, we know that he really needs no introduction nor presentation. I always say that the preacher, he's of age, and he can speak for himself. But 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 tonight, we're going to ask her to do just that favor, and then we'll continue on in the services after she's made the introduction. The choir will sing, and we're going to get excited about what God has got to hear. We have to have an ear to hear. We were given a prophetic word last night. I, I was given a prophetic word for the house. And we just thank God because you're ready for the move. This is the year of new wine. And you cannot pour new wine into old vessels. So if you're still wearing that old vessel, if you're still walking around that old vessel, you will not be really ready to receive this new wine that is being poured out. Come on, daughter. Thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening. First, I'd like to give honor to God, who's the head of all of our lives. Yeah. Giving honor to Pastor Gil York, Pastor Duncan, uh, to the preacher of the evening, uh, Pastor Gil York. Uh, he did put me on the spot, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, the Bible said, be ready at all times. Uh, Reverend Gil York, he is no stranger to no one. Right. Reverend Gil York, he can preach. Uh, he is uh, the son of Sister Thelma Vett, Sister Thelma Gilliard, he has one son, and if you see uh, Reverend Gilliard, you get that little smile, you know why, because he's a dentist, and he always has that nice, pretty smile, <laughs> Reverend Gilliard will preach, he knows how to preach, I can go on and on about him, uh, my husband is sick, uh, he's always there to see him, He's always there. He always call him. Not only my husband, but he do it for everybody. Amen. So after the singing of the choir, you not you hear no other voice than Reverend Gilliard. Give him a hand, please. I've had trials and tribulation. I've been built and I've been gone. Soon, soon my trials will be over. And I won't stop. I'll lay my head. Oh, Lord. I'll lay my head. To lay my head. I'll lay my head. Oh, yeah. I'll lay my head. 
of her trials and tribulations. I've been built and I've been gone. Soon, soon, my young will be over. And I want some oil in my hand. Oh, Lord, in my hand. to lay my hand. Some oil in my hand. Oh, yeah. Some in my hand. And I want some Hold my soul. My head got wet one day in the midnight dew. I won't change nothing on this journey now, and I want some. I'm 
To God be the glory. I want somewhere to lay my head. Let's not let our laboring go in vain because there's somewhere to lay our head. I heard Pastor Duncan said that we were okay and but New Hope was the best choir. Every frog plays his own part. So all I'm going to say is, thank you, St. John's Choir. <laughs> this is celebrating 70 years. As was stated earlier in Jeremiah 29 and 10, it was stated that they would go through, they would, they would go through for 70 years. We often remember that 11th verse when he says, I know the things that I have for you, uh, the things of good and not of evil. You see, we, we, we forget the fact. See, we think that those good things coming right away. We, we, we didn't know that they were going through some things for 70 years uh, uh, before they got the thing that was promised to them. See, what that reminds us is we serve a good God. Uh, no matter what we're going through, he's a right on time God. He's going to be right on time. May not be when you want him, but he's always right on time. See, they had to go through some things in order to get the things that he promised, just like we have to go through some things to get what is promised to us, and just like Adam and Eve sinned in the beginning. But he kept his promise. He gave us a Savior to redeem us back to him may not have been when we wanted him, but he was right on time. I'm here just to celebrate with you for a few moments, laborers laboring for the master. First of all, giving all honor to God the Father, God the Son, our Redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Pastor Duncan, Reverend Blake, my pastor, Michael Wright out in the audience, all of the ministers, all of the pastors that are here visiting with us today, to the deacons, to this music ministry, to you and you ushers, to you and you all of God's children. Let us bow and pray. Almighty, all righteous, and all merciful God, Lord, I humbly come before you right now asking you to let me, Tony, decrease and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit speak to me, through me, for me, and with me. I need you, Lord, and I need you right now. Father, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins, both known and unknown. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart truly be accepted in your sight. These are the many blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Let all God angels say, Amen. Amen. Laborers, laboring for the Lord, for the Master. That's your theme, but tonight we will come from... 
Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And if you would stand for the reading of God's word, we'll read those two verses for you. We'll start off in the 18th, I'm sorry. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Amen. You may be seated. Our subject this morning, this afternoon, is God is the true purpose. God is the true purpose. Our theme, laborers, laboring for the Lord, for the Master. The theme, laborers, a noun which represents a person, a place, or thing. In this present case, it is a person. That person that we're talking about is the original 12 disciples and you and I today as disciples ourselves. Laborers as one that work, a person that does unskilled physical work for wages. But here we're talking about God's laborers, one who work through men, not only through the organized church, but throughout all the nation. Laboring is pretty much an adjective. However, it shows in terms of an action of what we're speaking and how it's placed tonight of what is happening. This verb tells us the physical means in which the laborer are working. Working for who? For the master. Matthew 9, 34 and 38, Jesus performs some miracles. And as we see that he performs these miracles, uh, he performed one when there was a paralyzed man and he just got off the boat. And when he performed the miracle and allowed this men to work, they were marveled by this. And as he then continued on, there was a ruler that came and said, my daughter is dead. And he, he went to go perform it. But then at that time, that woman grabbed the, the hem of his garment and she told him by her faith, she was now healed and as he kept on going through and he went and he praised and he blessed the young girl who was upset to be dead and he, he sent them all away and he held her hands and when he held her hands he said to them she was just asleep. And then, and then as we continue to walk through, we, we saw where, where, where Jesus uh, went and he, he blessed the, the, the man that was mute. Uh, and, and the man that was mute that had the devil in him, uh, he, 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 he blessed him. And now this man spoke. But the Pharisees, the Pharisees said that he used the non demonic uh, power to heal this man. So then that's now where you get, he's saying, the harvest is plentiful. Because at that time, it was only him performing the miracles. It was just Jesus at that time doing the performance of the miracles. And as you continue to walk through this story, you, you, you see now that he gave them some important news. He said, go and pray. See, giving us the most essential part of our connection is to go and pray. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble and he'll make it. All right. Jesus performed miracles. He healed the mute. The crowd that uh, kept coming out to him to be healed and he felt compassion for them. He felt compassion because they were like sheeps without a shepherd. The Pharisees were leading the people into a condition of false hope. Uh, accusing Jesus of conspiring with the ruler 
of the demons in order to cast out the demons in the root, root in the mute man. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Jesus at this time was only preaching the good news. Uh, how many of us today are teaching and preaching the good news? Who is the good news? The good news is Jesus, the Christ. He is the purpose for the season today. John was in prison. The religious leaders have not yet recognized him as being the Messiah. Uh, he was the only one healing the people. But in verse 38, it says, pray therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he may send laborers into the harvest. Well, what he was doing at that time, he was commissioning the commissioners. He was getting them ready for the job and the responsibility that they had yet before them, allowing them to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what he was leading them to do. Don't go on your own understanding, but seek ye first. Not their way, but seek God Jesus first. Jesus making true disciples out of them. Uh, verse chapter 10, verse 6 goes on to say, but go ye rather to the lost sheep of Israel. Uh, see, we got to sometimes get from behind the brick in the mortar. Sometimes we got to go out and help the lost sheep. They're needing us more than ever before. Making disciples for the growth of his kingdom. Matthew chapter 20, chapter 28, verses 18 to 20 is where we're working from tonight. And Jesus came and he spoke unto them, saying, All powers given to me in heaven and in earth, go ye therefore and teach all nations, all, uh, you see, all powers, all nations, all about God. And he has all powers in his hands and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Laborers laboring for the Lord. This is done by knowing that God himself is the true purpose for this great commandment, uh, this great commission. Uh, the triumph living Lord uh, sends forth his ambassadors. Yeah, he's getting them ready. You, you, you know, when, when you're laboring uh, for the Lord, you, you, you are the laborer. You are doing the work. And you're doing the work for the boss. And that boss in this term is God the Father. See, see, we got to get ready to do the work. Now, how do we get ready to do the work? Uh, we got to seek him first. Uh, we got to then, he said, if my people called by my name. And what is the first thing he said? Humble themselves. Uh, we got to humble ourselves. Even Jesus Christ humbled himself. I could imagine when he was getting ready to go on the cross. He got down and he washed the feet of his disciples, humbling himself. How many of us today could humble ourselves? Here to proclaim the gospel throughout the world. He knew that he, him, Jesus, could only be in one place at one time. But, but, but he, he filled them with the power of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit that is with you. That Holy Spirit that is with me. That Holy Spirit that gives us a conscience. That Holy Spirit that guides us and leads us along the way giving us instructions as he did to the disciples before him ascending into the heavens what did he say he says go and make disciples of all nations fulfilling the promise that God made to Abraham that through Isaac he will rise up a full nation all 
in, in this world, given, we give all the full attention. Not some, not a few, not your friends, not the wealthiest, not the prettiest, not the most good looking, not the most popular, but he says, all, all, talking about the church universal disciples of all nations as laborers we are to spread the good news spread the gospel which is Jesus Christ go ye this was not a question but it was a command he's telling you to go he ain't asking you to go he's telling you to go and he's telling you and I right now go who who was to go uh, at that time, it was only 11. Started off with 12, but at this time, you know, in chapter 28, uh, Jesus had just rose from the grave. He got up out of the tomb, and, and now there were just 11 because Judas Iscariot had already hung himself because he was the betrayer. So, so there was 11 of them right now, and he wanted them to go fulfill the commission. Go and tell the nation that Jesus Christ lives. The disciples were to go and spread the good news. Who are we talking about? Simon, known as Peter, uh, the brother of Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. These were the four fishermen. Uh, Matthew was the tax collector. Uh, Bartholomew was known as Nathaniel. And we know James the Great. Thomas the Doubter, Simeon or Simon the Zealot, Jude and Philip. But then we also remember the betrayer was Judas Iscariot. Go! Go! Each one of these men had true nine to fives. They had a job, but they had common responsibilities. However, Jesus knew. Jesus knew the heart of these men. Does he know your heart today? Where does your heart lie today? I'm here just to remind you that we all will fall short. We all will make mistakes. But yet still he knows your heart. I asked you a question today. Can God use you? He showed us time after time that he chooses very ordinary men to do extraordinary work. Uh, men that love him. Men that are obedient to the word of God. Uh, this does not mean uh, a perfect man or a perfect woman, but one with a clean and a pure heart. Do you have a clean and a pure heart? Uh, as a man thinketh with his heart, so is he. Uh, I'm here to remind you of your vocation does not matter. Your pedigree does not matter. Culture does not matter. Your financial status does not matter. Nothing in the natural matter. However, you must be obedient. The disciples are learners, students, followers, and they were acceptant of the teacher's teaching. And limitation and imitation of his practices. Disciples, as we know, are followers of Christ. Luke 6 and 40 says, A disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. There's only one perfect, just Jesus the Christ. He should let his mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. They followed him for three years, learning that although you may give the best of yourself, Pastor, uh, you may give the best of yourself, sometimes you go the last mile of the way, push the extra mile, and still somebody may not even appreciate you. May not be appreciated by your colleagues, by your community, but just know. He said, if the world hates you, understand that they hated Jesus Christ first. 
they must have said, follow me as I follow Christ. Who, how, how are the disciples like Jesus? The disciples like Jesus follow the commands of God. John 14 and 15 said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. What are his commandments? Repent and follow Jesus. Uh, Mark 1 and 15, be baptized. Matthew 28 and 19, pray. Matthew 9 and 13, make disciples. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, love. Matthew 22, 37 and 39, Lord's Supper, Luke 22, 19, and 20. You got to give of yourself. Luke 6 and 38. Philippians 2, 5, and 8 says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no repetition, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeliness of man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself are you humble tonight uh, are you looking around and seeing everything that's going on around us uh, do you see that people are like the old folks say people dying and they ain't never died before Ah, uh, yeah, that's a hard one to believe, but but but, but what it means is people that, that that are a younger age are dying in masses, leaving the side. Are you ready? If your name was to be called today, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you humble? Oh, you got to humble yourself. Jesus himself was obedient. He was not asked by God to be our sacrificial lamb. He followed the instructions of the Father. He followed the instructions of the Father. And the instructions of God, he was obedient to God's commission for him. God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for my sins and your sins. Uh, our God is working to restore the radiance of his own glory uh, shining in and through us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life Jesus obeyed what that request of him was and we as his disciple must also obey his word. Uh, how, how do we become? Uh, it says, study to show yourself approved. A workman need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of God is like a two-edged sword. It pierces it penetrates, but most of all, it gives you peace. A peace that surpasses all of our understanding. Why? Because God is the true purpose for this great commission. The spreading of the good news. He came to be the sacrificial lamb. Our Father, if thou art willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Uh, we're going to go through some trial and tribulation. He tells you this in chapter 16 of John. In this world, there will be tribulation, but be of peace. Why? Because I have overcome this world. A disciple is a doer, not just a hearer of God's word but it's a doer. He said, go, go and make disciples. I'm sure just like Isaiah said, one day you and I have heard the same voice of the Lord saying, go. And then I'm sure that one of us had to say, who shall I send? And I'm imagining pastor, you said, send me, 
I'll go. Uh, did you say, here I am. Uh, send me. Uh, you are calling to spread the good news. Tell them he lives. He lives in me. He lives in me and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Uh, he lives, because he lives, all fear is gone. Uh, he have a responsibility. Uh, Ephesians 4, 11 and 16 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry of the body of Christ till we all come in unity. We got to come together as one family in Christ. Time is winding up and is waiting on nobody. That we hence be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about every wind of doctrine, but the slate of man and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to the deceiver, but speaking the truth and love may grow up inside of you and him in all things which is ahead even Christ from whom the whole body filthy joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measures of every part making it increase of the body unto edifying of itself in what? Love. 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 Do you love your neighbor as you love yourself? See, some of us don't even love ourselves. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, in order to love somebody else, you got to love who God created. Because he created you. He made you just who you are. How? How do we make disciples? How do we make disciples? We tell them, those that are listening, tell them of the good news. Tell them that it is he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Tell them that love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. Tell them love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. Tell them that you are the son and the daughter of the living God. Tell them that we serve a living God. He has all power in his hand. Tell them that this God that I serve, he knows everything about me and you. Uh, he said to me, he said, Jesus is the light of the world. And he is a lamp upon my feet. The light upon my path. He's going to guide me. He's going to direct me in the way in which I should go. Are you let them guide you tonight? Are you let them lead you tonight? The God that we serve has all power in his hands. The God that we serve gave his life on Calvary's cross. The God that we serve sat on the cross and in the middle of the cross he said, Eli, Eli, Sabatina, my God, my God, why are you forsaking me? I'm telling you today, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. And after he was buried in an unused tomb, but he did not stay there. He rose up on that Sunday morning. He shook up mortality. He put on immortality. Grave ways of power. Death ways of strength. Now God had no power over me. Now he sits on the right hand throne of God the Father. Tell him on this journey we must pray in season and out of season. On this journey 
we got to remember that my God has all authority over heaven and over earth. My God gave his life for me and for you. That's why it should be easy for us to be laborers laboring for the master. To God be the glory. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is, who my Jesus is. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is, who my Jesus is. Oh, he walked on the water, who Jesus is. Oh! 
Holy Ghost, I make you walk right. I make the Holy Ghost, I make you talk right. I make the Holy Ghost, I make you pray right. I make the Holy Ghost, oh Holy Ghost, oh Holy Ghost. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, God is the true purpose. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Woo. I am overwhelmed today. You know when you feel that you're a part of somebody? I was his bus driver when he was younger. So it's just like he's one of my children. And I am just grateful to be under a powerful man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I preached a sermon last Sunday that said, do you have the power to make a difference? Do you have the power to make a difference, church? Say, laboring? Labor for the master. Oh God, time is winding up. We ought to get our houses in order. Because we don't know when nor where. Hallelujah. So the time has come that we open the doors of the church. Somebody may come for one thing and somebody may come for another. We may not know what you're coming for, but God knows. Come to the altar, tell him all about your trouble and watch him work. But you gotta have the faith that he can do it. You gotta have the faith. So don't just come and now expect nothing. I say nothing from nothing, leave nothing. To choir sing a song. Hallelujah. And you may come. Jesus, touch me. Hallelujah, Lord. I know all the joy that floods my soul. Thank you, God. Someday. Happy.
come just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to see another day, God. Thank you for allowing us to come together one more time to give your name praise, honor, and glory. Because you are worthy of all our praises, God. You say when praises go up, blessings come down. Hallelujah. God, we have some people that come to the altar today. God, we ask you to bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Some come for one thing and some come for another. But God, you know all things. You know what their aim and desires are. So God, we just ask you to fix it right now in the name of Jesus. Fix it like you said you would. Father, we know if you can't fix it, then it just can't be done. But we know that you have all powers in your hands there, God. So God, do the work. Do the work. Go from heart to heart and then from mind to mind. If anything is not like you, cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you to draw us closer to you, dear God. Because we realize the time is winding up. God, we have sick among us, dear God. Send your healing power right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody may be in bereavement, God. God, we just ask you to comfort them right now. Let them know that weeping men do for a night. But joy will come in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody may come burdened down. Hallelujah. Lift every heavy burden right now in the name of Jesus. Do it, God. Do it right now. Oh, God, when they leave this altar, they will have joy. That unspeakable joy. Knowing that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So strengthen us, dear God. Continue to bless Pastor right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, he has given us a word to feed on. Lord, I ask you, everyone, to take it in. Take it in. Make a change. Make a difference in your life and somebody else's life. We pray for Pastor Duncan and First Lady, dear God. Continue to keep them covered under your blood, dear God. Do more for him than I'm able to ask, dear God. The New Hope family, draw them closer. Closer to you, oh God. The visitors and friends, continue to lift our spirit, dear God. That we can all come together and lift up the name of Jesus. And God, when it's all been said and done, give us a home somewhere in your kingdom. Dr. Job declared that the wicked will cease from troubling us. And our weary soul will find rest. These and all the blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. We say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Jesus. Of my heavenly, hallelujah, Lord, heavenly oh, and I know, I know, I know, I know, that I'm going there, there one day, oh. It may be morning, night or noon, I don't know just how soon that I'm sitting, sending on my timber, Jesus. Every day, every day, sin I'm sinning up my timber, up my timber, up my timber, sinning up my timber every day. Somewhere in glory, my timber. 
service praise and worship has been wonderful uh, the singing the preaching the praying uh, uh, the fact that God has shown up in the house amen I pray that whatever you came uh, for looking for from God I pray that you've uh, not come empty-handed uh, not leave empty-handed rather and we just thank God always come expecting something from God amen come with expectation it may not be your night tonight, but if you were expecting God to heal somebody, and if you expect Him to heal you, but it wasn't your night to get healed. But it was your neighbor got healed. Amen. And you ought to give God, praise God. Well, maybe the next time I come, maybe it'll be my turn next. But we must always come expecting God bless this preacher on tonight. And had a word for us on tonight. Amen. Because he is still the true purpose. Because God is still God, and he is the true purpose of why we do what we do. Thank you, preacher, for this night. Thank you, choir. I knew you had it up in there. You're not as good as New Hope, but thank God for you anyhow. And so we just thank God, because I knew it was down in there. The enemy would try to clamp you down now. You know, but give him glory. Let him know that, uh-uh, not tonight. You may catch me next week, but not tonight. You won't do it, amen? And so we thank God. There are no hindering spirits. And so we got to talk to ourselves as we talk to the enemy, amen? When something is troubling you and bothering you, let the enemy know you have no victory here, amen? We thank God tonight, amen? And don't let them people who are going to leave here tonight talk trash, amen? I don't go there. That's why I don't go there right now. No, that ain't why you don't go there. I can tell you why you don't come here, but I won't tell you why you don't come here because we have already trusted God that God will set the standard in this house. Amen. Thank God for it. Amen. We, we ain't scared now. Y'all know that by now. If you didn't know, now you do know. We have a work to be done. Preacher told us because we were told that God himself, Jesus is still hiring. Help wanted is what the preacher said. Help wanted. Jesus is still hiring. Amen. And sometimes you got to run from a thing because if you don't run from it, you will fall for anything. Amen. And so we thank God tonight and God is still the purpose for all what we do. And so we're just grateful again tonight. I think I'll, I'll mistress of ceremony needs to be back up here I don't know why she figured she was supposed to go uh, so we're not finished yet thank y'all for this offering on tonight we thank God for all what God has done I don't know this is group number three night tonight so I know they got some presentations they want to make and all the other stuff and but we are so grateful uh, Dr. Gilliard God bless you my brother uh, I know you hadn't reached your two year mark but you're still on a honeymoonish kind of a thing and so thank God that, that, that St. John's came out tonight to support and we thank God for that so I, I, I do encourage you, St. John, this is your leader, this is your pastor. So when he's got somewhere to go, try your best to be with him. Amen. I, I know you don't feel like it all the time. I know you work a nine to five. I know you got some things going on. I know you got all these other things. But every now and then, set aside some of them things just to say, well, your pastor's got an assignment tonight. And so I want to be there to support the work of the ministry. Amen. And we thank God. Music is such an important part of the church. We got to recognize that. So we just thank God as group three is going to come now and conclude these services. I am thrilled. This has been an awesome week. This has been a wonderful week. Now, we ain't finished yet, but like I said, if you want to come back and hear how much money you all raise, then come back on Sunday afternoon. We'll be right here Sunday afternoon and we'll give you that report. Um, Thank you all so much for, for your patience with me. I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed to be up in New, in New Hope. I've been here for a few years now, and I thank God they ain't got rid of me yet because God sent me here. So, And if I'm not here, be you assured it would have been by the hand of God that I am not here. I have another assignment to go to. I ain't looking to go nowhere no time soon now. 
See, Reverend Edwards was here for 25 years. Reverend Legree was here for 25 years. So I've got seven more at least to go. So I'm going to get my 25. Y'all can talk about I got to go. You got to go because we want we church. Yeah, well, okay, after 25 years, then you can have your touch.
To God be the glory. <clears throat> First of all, giving honor to God. Pastor Duncan, New Hope family, may God bless you on this 70 year anniversary as you conclude and finish up on Sunday. St. John's, thank you. May God continue to bless each of you. If we take a moment and those that's with us from St. John's and my pastor and Lovely Hill, would you stand? We want to thank each of you on this night. I, I'm going to be quick. I have to go to work tomorrow. <clears throat> My first patient is at 8 o'clock. Uh, Deacon Dees, my brother. I had to wait till now to say this because it, I couldn't preach if I did before. Uh, he was on one floor and my wife was on the other floor. And I would go back and forth all night checking on both of them. And April 8th this week was five years since Mama went home. April 9th, four years since our aunt, we call her Teddy, Ethel, went home. And tomorrow will be four years since Daddy went home. And December was four years for my wife. They went all in one year. God kept you. And I can remember we would go out to lunch and he would say, excuse me, because see, sometimes my mouth says something that my mind can't regulate, so just don't worry about what I say sometimes. But God used you tonight. Yeah. And your mouth and your mind were working together. Yeah. <laughs> Through the power of the Holy Spirit. As we get ready to leave tonight, I say to you, God loves you, I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. Let the church. One more time. Let the church say me. Let the church say me. God has spoken. So let the church say me. May the grace of God, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with you hence now and forevermore. Amen.